All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. We are sitting here in the uh, the uh, lovely town of Cleveland, Tennessee. I am washed up in here on, uh, it is a Tuesday, I believe, April 18th, 2023. I am uh, carting my invalid sister around the eastern U.S. after she broke her ankle while we were taking a walk on Saturday. But anyway, to kill the time, waiting for her latest doctor appointment, uh out here over at medium.com and uh guys i i honestly do not know uh if this clueless moron it, it is is being ironic or not this is not april fool's day it is it, 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 that was a couple of weeks ago so for all i know this clueless moron named Michael Leitman is, I, I, I guess, oh, well, this was written on April 3rd. So I, I'm going to try to, it was published in medium.com on April 3rd. I'm going to try to give this man the benefit of the doubt that, uh, that this was an April Fool's essay and that there was nobody on this planet this clueless th th this is the single most ridiculous story i have ever read about overpopulation since the uh oops it looks like my sister is let me uh are you ready to roll no, no, no. He hasn't even come in the room yet. So I was just letting you know if you're hungry, I'm getting worried about you. You should probably have a No, I'm sitting here ranting. Oh, okay. I'm in the room. He just hadn't come in. You're in the room. All right. Okay. We're making progress. My invalid sister is in the room. I have been sitting here for 45 minutes. Uh, anyway, that's the good news. So uh, this dude, Michael Leitman, makes... Uh, what's that guy's name? Elon Musk sound reasonable in comparison. Who is this clueless moron? Michael Leitman has a PhD in philosophy and Kabbalah. A ma an MSC, whatever that means, in medical biocybernetics. He is the founder and president of some word, some sort of Kabbalah Education and Research Institute. And he is asking the question, when will human population exceed the capacity of planet Earth? When will human population exceed the capacity of planet Earth? This guy looks about my age, so... Uh, there is a popular narrative today about human overpopulation being a problem. That it increases global warming, climate change, and disease, to name a few. However, in actuality, the more human population, the less suffering we each individually endure. Uh, we need to understand that there is no such concept as redundant people in the world. Not only can our planet handle many more people, a higher population also does not equate to more suffering. Yes. If there are more people, if there are more people 
on planet Earth, then the amount of suffering disperses among them, and as a result, everyone suffers less. Of course, he never mentions anywhere after the first sentence the words climate change and all the rest of it never show up here. Okay. Say humanity needs to endure one million tons of suffering <laughs> at a certain stage of its development, then what would you prefer? What would you prefer? To be part of a humanity of 8 billion people that needs to deal with that 1 million tons of suffering, or to be part of a humanity of 2 billion people taking on that burden, it is clear that we would choose the option of less suffering. So, uh, there, so on a planet of 2 billion people, each person would be suffering four times as much as on a planet of 8 billion people and five times as much as on a planet of 10 billion people. I would like to take this article to a UN refugee camp in Somalia, for instance, and run this by. So anyway, guys, uh, I, 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 I cannot stand this. What is the... Uh, the, what is his bottom line? There are no redundant people. What is redundant is all the thinking put into restricting population growth. Instead of thinking about restricting the population, we should think about how we can guide our rapidly growing population to a positively connected society. Yes, by doing so, we would realize our ability to exercise our free choice and discover a new picture of reality. Yes, above the one we currently perceive in the ego. <laughs> anyway, guys, I, I uh, can't deal with it. Anyway, so thank God we're going to uh, scroll down. And uh, I've uh, mentioned this fellow, Alan Urban on Medium.com. We need to, uh, Elliot, we need to bring Alan Urban on the show. All I know about Alan is he is preparing for the collapse of global industrial civilization. Uh, unlike that last idiot we heard from, uh, he is uh, contributing to the collapse of global industrial civilization, while Alan Urban is uh, preparing for the collapse of global industrial civilization. So, you know, Alan Urban, uh, he has a total of 456 followers on the planet. We need to get Alan. If how, uh, how many more? Let's see, Michael Leitman has one and a half thousand. So Alan Urban, 456. So in addition to his uh, magnus opus, about the 10 reasons why global industrial civilization is collapsing, which I've covered a couple of times. What this fellow does, if you uh, go on medium.com and start following him, I don't, I don't know if this is every week, but he is, um, he does an excellent one of these the Chronicles of the Collapse, which he calls 
collapse catch up collapse catch up and this is I guess it's a kind of a weekly so this is the ninth edition of collapse catch up yeah a weekly newsletter that catches you up on the latest signs that we are living through the collapse of global industrial civilization this week we have news about record high oil demand record high co2 levels record high temperatures widespread water shortages cancer causing chemicals the threat of world war three and more let's dive in so uh if you get tired of doom scrolling alan urban uh, is doing your doom scrolling for you so let's hear what's on the mind of somebody with a brain after that last nonsense while i wait for my invalid sister to see the doctor all right obviously he's kicking off with the fort lauderdale uh storm that usually only comes along every 1,000 to 2,000 years. Uh, who out there thinks it's going to be 1,000 to 2,000 years from now before Fort Lauderdale floods? Uh, on the other side of the globe, Western Australia got hit with its strongest cyclone in 14 years. The storm set a record with the single highest sustained wind speed in Australian history. Okay, so it looks like the planet just experienced its second warmest March since 1850 and April is shaping up to be even hotter. Uh, you know, it's uh, talking about record high temperatures for the month of April are being broken all over North America. Well, not so true down here. Uh, you, you know, it's been like 25 degrees warmer every day in Ithaca, New York, than it's been in Texas and New York. I guess it's in the 40s right now in Ithaca, New York, but I see... It's going to be 85 degrees uh, by the end of the week in Ithaca, New York again. 85 degrees. And it just makes me wonder uh, what exactly. It was 89. I was talking to my uh, Amish buddies up there on uh, Friday. 89 degrees in Ithaca, New York. Heading up to 85 this Friday. Okay, here are just a few cities that had record high temperatures last week. Obviously, Burlington, Vermont, Chicago, Illinois, Denver, Colorado, Detroit, Michigan, Hartford, Connecticut, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and of course, New York City. Uh, Denver beat its old record by 6 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, some other countries enduring brutal heat waves include China, India, South Africa, Spain, and Thailand. Uh, Sandy was talking about all that shit going on in Spain. Uh, summer hasn't even arrived yet so we can only imagine what kind of temperatures we'll see in the coming months china is already expecting power shortages due to the increased use of air conditioners and uh he has links to all of that i mean in in every one of these alan has uh i could click on any one uh, of these links this is all he's doing is just you know going down the links incredibly all these record highs are happening even though El Nino 
has not arrived yet. And climate models predict <clears throat> El Nino will arrive before the end of the year. Not only that, this El Nino is expected to be a super El Nino, and he's got links to that, which means even worse floods, droughts, heat waves, and storms. It also means that 2024 could be the first year that the average global temperature surpasses the one and a half C threshold. Links to that. Okay, from temperatures to CO2. So on April 12th, six days ago, the Mount Aloha, Mount Alau Observatory recorded a record high CO2 concentration of 423.23 parts per million. That is the highest concentration of CO2 in millions of years. It's no surprise then that the surface of the ocean is the hottest it has ever been since satellite measurements began. I noticed when I was talking to Elliot, uh, last time I talked to Elliot when we had Michael Campy on the show, uh, Elliot was talking about this, about how the surface of the ocean is the hottest it has ever been in millions of years and we're heading into a super El Nino. Do your own math. Meanwhile, the ocean is also rising faster than ever, according to a study published in the Journal of Nature Communications. Sea levels along the southeast and Gulf Coast are rising faster than previously believed. Do you think so? And then a couple of you sent me this article. Uh, moving from our own country down to Antarctica. An Antarctic ocean current that helps maintain the food chain is being disrupted by global warming according to a study published in the journal Nature which he has a link to melting ice from Antarctica is slowing down the circulation of deep ocean water scientists estimate that it will slow down by about 42 percent by 2050 and if it does, it will not carry as much carbon, oxygen, and nutrients to sea life closer to the surface. And those nutrients support about three quarters of global phytoplankton, which is the base of the food chain. So the collapse of this current would be catastrophic. And so while all of that's going on in the ocean, what's going on here in the freshwater, while, you know, California and uh, Fort Lauderdale are underwater, much of the world is still dealing with water shortages. Europe, uh, for example, is experiencing its worst drought in five hundred years as countless rivers begin to run dry. Uh, I've been seeing several uh, mainstream media articles about this and Sandy's been talking about this on Environmental Coffee House. Uh, the water sor shortages you know in Europe are so severe that many communities are now relying on bottled water for their drinking water, and we all know what that means for plastic pollution. Gee, 
climate change is the main cause of these water shortages and the lifestyles of the rich are making them worse, according to a new study published in Nature Sustainability. Love that title, Nature Sustainability. Overconsumption of water for large homes, gardens, and swimming pools is leaving less water for poor communities. Uh, in Cape Town, South Africa, for instance, the wealthiest households consume nearly 12 times as much water as the poorest households. Similar ratios can be found in other cities all over the world. Uh, right here in our own country, uh, western states are debating about how to divvy up water from the Colorado River. A lot of uh, talk about that. So what has Joe Biden been up to recently? This has been a common theme here uh, on Collapse. So what is going on with Joe Biden? Uh, the Biden administration, you know, recently approved Alaska gas exports, which I mentioned at the end of a rant couple of, this is not the Willow Project. It, uh, so last week, the Biden administration approved this huge Alaska gas export meaning it's not even being used here in the U.S. for our bullshit energy independence. So Joe Biden is going on to our public lands in Alaska, uh, approving this huge natural gas project, and then selling it all to Asia. Uh, critics argue this is yet another carbon bomb. Many people are angry with Biden uh, since his approval of, uh, of the Willow Project, and although he doesn't mention it here, and the 73 million acres of the bottom of the uh, Gulf of Mexico, since Biden campaigned on fighting climate change and no more drilling on our public lands, his subservience to the oil industry feels like betrayal. Hmm. And meanwhile, with Joe Biden's help, of course, oil continues to rule the world. According to the International Energy Agency, Global demand for oil, global demand for oil will likely hit a record high this year, despite warnings from the IPCC that we need to cut our oil and gas consumption. Hmm. We continue to head in the wrong direction with all sorts of new drilling projects. Then he links you over to this list of these new fossil fuel drilling projects all over this country and this planet. Even, all right, maybe I can wrap this up. Are you ready? No, uh-uh, they're putting on a big splint and everything. I was gonna <laughs> tell you though, I had to take off my pants and they gave uh, me these paper shorts. Uh. Are you sure? Yes. All right. And I'll just uh, come back after I stuff my face with some biscuits and gravy. All right, now. See you. <laughs> anyway, it looks like this is going to go on for a while. Uh, where was I uh, talking about all of these fossil fuel projects being approved in California. 
Uh, despite all of this, some people still insist that we can keep burning fossil fuels and save the planet by capturing CO2 and storing it underground. Yes. Oh, anyway, guys, uh, talking about all of this BS, uh, carbon capture and storage, all of that hopium. Then uh, you might have seen this story about how CFCs are making a comeback. Uh, on and on, residents in East Palestine, Ohio are continuing to get sick. Uh, this just a uh, good God. Here is the uh, the amphibians are being wiped out by this fungus we've been hearing about. Uh, forty one percent of amphibian species are already threatened with extinction. Here is scientists finding more. Uh, animals dying from bird flu. Uh, good God. Uh, then he looks in at the economy. Uh, oh, good Lord, don't forget geopolitics. Uh, last week... Brazil's new president called for the end of dollar dominance. Yes, as officials from Russia and China met to discuss ways to limit the West dominance. Uh, okay, so what is the conclusion to wrap this up? <clears throat> That's all for this week. Let me know if I missed anything or if you have any feedback. I share this news to remind you that if you have not started preparing for the collapse of civilization, now is the time to start stockpiling supplies, learning basic skills, and making friends in your local community. If this news has made you feel anxious, please visit this page for a list of resources that can help. You can also get this newsletter by subscribing to my newsletter on Collapse Survival site. Anyway, thank you, Alan Urban, for doing our doom scrolling for me. But, uh, I guess my sister says go ahead and have some, uh, biscuits and gravy at the Old Fart Restaurant in Cleveland, Tennessee, while I still can. So I'm going to put on some fat at the Old Fart Restaurant in Cleveland, Tennessee. This is how I am preparing for the collapse of global industrial civilization. I highly suggest you get out there and uh, put on some weight while you still can. My guys. Alright, little log, are you ready to head out? <laughs>